Hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC, your instructor, and this is my YouTube channel called Paul DC Gemstones. Ironically enough, well, really, it's not that ironic. It is my name after all. Um, as of this taping, and this is the 17th of February, 2021, just two days after my 61st birthday. Now, I set a goal at the beginning of February saying I wanted to surpass a thousand view uh, subscribers. So with your help, I've done exactly that. In fact, we're now closer to actually over 1,050. So remember, please subscribe if you haven't done so. I know it says subscribe, but it is completely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. Speaking of not costing you a penny, my goal is to have the largest weekly free gem classes on YouTube. And with your help, I'm getting there. So don't forget to subscribe. Another thing I wanted to talk about this is the second in my mini series of some of the members of the Garnet family. Now, I thought, am I overdoing it? Are you guys going to be ODing on Garnet? Well, apparently not, because my number one and number two lessons trending in the last week are Garnet 101, which I think is episode 48, and Al Almondine Garnet, which I misspelled on my uh, thumbnail, by the way. I had to change that. I just found that out. Um, Almondine, which is episode 49, is ranking second. Well, you are definitely in for a treat because this is not arguably, it's, it's my favorite member of the Garnet family of gemstones. It is called Pyrope Garnet. That's what this lesson is going to be all about today. Many of you might never have heard or ever seen a Pyrope Garnet, but it is sometimes really rivaling the beauty of a ruby at a fraction of the cost. Now, like I said in the last lesson with the Almondine, Pyrope is part of the aluminum members of the Garnet family. Remember, Garnets have a, a kind of a wide family and some have slightly different chemical compositions. But this one, in fact, I'm going to I have to show this to you. This is a piece that I sold uh, in the past. And that looks, if that doesn't look like the juiciest red ruby that you've ever seen in your life, this is actually a, uh, I think it's set with, I don't know, probably close to a hundred of the pie rope garnets. And they look just as good as any ruby that you will ever see. Um, where does the name come from? Pie rope. Pie rope comes from the Greek language and it is a word that means fire and eye. And your eye will definitely see a lot of fire with the pie rope garnets. And that's a great example of that. Um, it also has a couple of other nicknames. Sometimes it's referred to as chrome pie rope. Sometimes it's called the bohemian, bohemian garnet. And that's because that's where some of the richest deposits, that's actually where this came from. These uh, garnets were certified to come from that area in Bavaria that produces some of the finest uh, pie rope garnet in the world. There are other names that are what I would call misnomers and, and a little bit misleading at, at, uh, at best or illegal at worst. Um, Bohemian Ruby. Uh, I remember when I was first discovering this stone when I first sold it on HSN whew, close to 30 years ago. Uh, Cape Ruby was another uh, name that people used to describe this garnet. Uh, other names, Colorado Ruby, uh, Arizona Ruby, California Ruby, Rocky Mountain Ruby, and Bohemian Carbuncle. And if you remember from our uh, 101, our Garnet 101, we talked about Carbuncle being the name that was given to Ruby all those years ago by Pliny the uh, Elder. But let's talk about some of the uh, traits of the Pyrope Garnet specifically. And I'm going to show you how that compares to a ruby because that's what this is most often compared to. So first of all, like all garnets, it is a birthstone for the month of January. So whether it's an almondine or a pyrope or a spessartite or a savorite, any member of the garnet family is going to be the birthstone for the month of January. Uh, it is the second wedding anniversary. So if you're celebrating that second wedding anniversary garnet, again, any variety of garnet will do, is the second anniversary stone. 
It is the zodiac st uh, stone for the sign of Aquarius, of which I am a proud member. Uh, that is, you're an Aquarian if it's from January 21st is your birthday between February 21st, then this would be your zodiac stone. Chemical composition. Remember, garnets are going to be similar to one another, but you have the aluminum group and you have the magnesium group. Uh, and this one is part of the aluminum group. And uh, you'll see that on that chart that I show you with its other family members. The crystal structure is cubic, just like a diamond. Garnets have a cubic crystal st structure. Now comparing that to the ruby side by side, the ruby would be a trigonal crystal structure. So they are not the same gemstone, even though they might look exactly alike. The um, hardness, the hardness of the pie rope garnet is between seven and seven and a half on the Mohs scale. Now remember the Mohs scale is literally a scale that says what gem will scratch another gem. Seven to seven and a half is really, really good, better than a quartz, really. Um, but not so good as a ruby. A ruby is going to be a nine out of 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. Now we get into the toughness that describes how can a gem resist chipping and cracking altogether. Well, it's rated fair to good, pretty good for wearing every single day in your pie rope garnet. Your ruby, however, is rated excellent. The only thing that's tougher than a ruby or a sapphire would be jade. So still good on uh, both of those scales, but I'm, I wanted to compare it to ruby because this is what this most uh, often looks like. Refractive index. Now this is an important one. This, is, this uh, deals with the actual sparkle. You can measure the sparkle of a gemstone. Diamonds are among the top at 2.42. You get into the uh, zircons. A natural zircon is going to be 1.9 something. It's 9397. I forget what it was. Uh, and then you get into what the uh, refractive index is. It's 1.72 to 1.76. That's pretty high on the for any color gemstone on the sparkle. Uh, but the ruby's a little bit higher, but they're really, really close. Now, let me uh, read these to you again. Refractive index of pyrope garnet, 1.72 to 1.76. That's the range. The, the ruby, however, is 1.76 to 1.77. So really, really close to one another on that uh, sparkle range. And then we get into the specific gravity. That's the heft, once again, of a gemstone. Uh, pretty good on the uh, specific gravity for pyrope. It's 3.5 to 3.6. How does that compare to the ruby and the sapphire? Well, that's a four. So slightly more dense would be your sapphire and your ruby. But you can not do better in trying to replicate the look of a beautiful ruby than the specifically the pyrope variety of the garnet. Okay, I am unabashedly a big fan of the pie rope garnet. And I think that if you ever see one in person, that's enough, you'll be, you'll be hooked. I mean, it's just such a beautiful red color and there aren't very many gems that are that pure red. In fact, when we talk about all of those members of the garnet family, when we talk specifically of pie rope, it's the only one that has absolutely red coloration and it will go from red to maybe a little bit of purple but it's the only one that is really exclusively red in all of the colorations that it comes in. It's going to be red. So as I said, big fan. Um, why? I think they're indistinguishable from most very, very fine and very, very expensive rubies. Now that's interesting because I don't know if you remember in the earlier part of this lesson, I talked about one of the names for pyrope is chrome uh, pyrope because that trace element of chromium is what gives the red color to that pyrope garnet, that unique red color to the pyrope garnet. And you might find it even more interesting to learn what causes the color red in a ruby. Well, guess what? It's that same element, the trace element of chromium. So that's another thing that these two gems have in, um, uh, in common which, with each other. 
Now, where does it come from? Where do you think that most of the pie, because garnets come from a lot of different areas. But let me tell you specifically about the pie rope garnet. Now, we talked about the area that was known as Bavaria, and that was in Europe. And that was where these specific pie ropes came from. But that was probably 30 or 40, maybe even 50 years ago. And we made that ring out of a stash of existing stones that were bought from the uh, collection of Bavarian garnets. So where else does it come from? Well, China produces some of the pyro. Madagascar, some really, really nice quality. I've had some great stuff from there in the past. Myanmar, which is the name of, that was formerly Burma, just like you see a lot of rubies coming out of Burma or Myanmar. Same is true with that chrome rich garnet, which is called pyro. Um, South Africa, Sri Lanka would be another, uh, uh, Tanzania. And again, rubies come out of Tanzania as well. So that would make sense that it comes from there and the United States of America. And I'm going to talk about a particular mining area, but yes, there are some garnets that come from the USA as well. Um, as far as India, India do, uh, does produce a lot of garnets, a lot of rhodolite garnets, a lot of almondine garnets. Uh, I don't, I've never really heard of any pie rope coming out of there. It doesn't say that it doesn't happen, but not in any significant quantities. And also that area of the Czech Republic, which is what Bavaria was, that area that included what was called Czechoslovakia, um, doesn't produce much of it anymore. Even that is the one that really gave birth to some of the nicknames of their, your pie rope garnet. Uh, now this is going to be an interesting part of the lesson. You know, you hear a lot of stories about mining responsibly. You probably heard about conflict diamonds or blood diamonds and how we want to strive to make sure that we get something where nobody's being mistreated or killed. Uh, like, Likewise, you hear about uh, drug cartels in Colombia and them getting involved in the illegal trade of emeralds to fund some of their smuggling efforts and their drug efforts. Uh, when I was in uh, Tanzania, uh, back when I visited the mine, shortly after that, an article came out in the New York Times talking about how uh, the uh, Osama bin Laden actually was using the Tanzanite trade to fund some of his terrorist efforts. Well, is there going to be a, a similar story that I'm going to tell you here? Well, would you believe that right here in the USA, in Arizona, there are miners who are being exploited, uh, working all hours of the day and night. They don't receive a decent wage. In fact, they're not paid at all. Who are these downtrodden miners who are being treated so poorly? <laughs> okay, look at your screen. Ants. This, there's a, a pie rope that comes out of Arizona and it's called Ant Hill Garnet. Now, of course, I'm joking. They're not being mistreated. <laughs> As they are excavating their ant hills and building their tunnels, they're coming across smaller specimens of pie rope garnet and they're removing it so it ends up falling down the side of the ant hill and you can go there and mine this spectacular red color beautiful pie rope garnet and the miners are actually ants well on that very happy note we're going to conclude this lesson next week. Don't forget, we're going to continue our mini series where we will get into the Spessor type, Spessor type, that yellow and orange variety of garnet. So I hope you won't have been worn out on the garnet by then. Remember, if you have not yet done so, please subscribe. Remember, it is absolutely free. It does not cost you one red penny. Yes, I said red penny for the garnet. I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching. And next week it will be Spessartite or Spessartine Garnet. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.